How's it going, everybody? Ed Ricker here, and you'll never guess what I finally got my hands on. The DJI Mavic Mini. Um, so I've been flying this the last couple days since it finally was delivered to me on Tuesday. I had originally ordered from DJI, and it said it was going to take forever, so I ordered from Best Buy, and then got them both within a couple days of each other. So I actually have two. Um, so I'm giving one of these away to a lucky viewer. Down below in the comments section, uh, type hashtag Mavic Mini and tell me what kind of footage you like to take and, or where you like to fly drones in that comment. And I'm going to select one lucky winner and I'm going to ship this Mavic Mini off to you. This is a really cool concept for drones to be under 250 grams in the United States. The FAA requires us uh, to register our drones if they're 250 grams and over. So this is 249 grams. Kind of funny. Um, it's also kind of funny how they actually made this work because it's so light and yet it does do some pretty cool things. It actually has better flight time and better video resolution than the Spark. Um, so pretty cool how they jammed so much stuff in here, but it's not the perfect drone. However, it's a, if it's a first drone or if it's a vacation drone, I think you might actually have a great time with it. And even though it doesn't have obstacle avoidance sensors, for the price, $399 for just the drone or $499 for the Fly More Combo, um, you really can't beat that at the moment for what this thing can do and just how stable the footage is. All right, so we're at the field right now. Um, we're at Dorothea Dix Park in Raleigh. I've got the uh, Mavic Mini with the Fly More Combo and the bag here. And uh, to help me make this video, check out who it is, Brett Garamella. So I'm super excited to fly with Ed today and uh, see our uh, impressions of it. So let's get to it. Wow. All right, my first impression is, never seen this, where the controller is bigger than the drone. At least that's what it looks like. <laughs> now this is the difference between just getting the drone itself and getting the Fly More Combo over here. So the Fly More Combo includes the bag and the battery hub with the two extra batteries um, and a couple other things like prop guards and stuff. But if you were to just buy the Mavic Mini by itself like this, uh, this is what it would come with, just the box and the remote control. One thing I'm gonna have to do is take my phone case off so that my phone can actually fit in here. I'm using the Google Pixel 4 XL. Shout out to Team Pixel. What are you using? I'm using my iPad. All right, so it says 249 grams. Um, and so I got the battery and the SD card. So this is all up weight. What 250 grams in the United States means is you don't have to register your drone if it's underneath 250 grams in weight. Uh, you don't have to register with the FAA. Now, a lot of people think that, oh, that means I can do anything I want and fly wherever I want and there no FAA rules apply to me. Well, that's not the case. Um, it's just as long as you're under 250 grams, you don't have to register, but you still have to abide by FAA regulations. So just like all DJI products, um, you press the power button once and then again and hold it and then put it down and let it do its thing. It's gonna twitch a little bit, it's gonna make some noise, the gimbal's gonna rock back and forth, that's all normal. Okay. Oh, we gotta do a... Um, a uh, Compass calibration? Yes. So, we're gonna rotate the drone. I'm gonna put out a tutorial on this, but we're gonna rotate the drone 360, and then, uh, that's horizontally, and then 360 vertically. All right, gonna go ahead and tap to open takeoff window. Now these are basically just stock settings with the DJI Fly app. We're not using the DJI Go app. Uh, that's for the full-size Mavics and Mavic uh, Air and stuff like that. Let's see, take off. All right, now we're somewhat close to a prison. Uh, not really close, we're still like way far enough away to be safe, but there is notification here saying central prison uh, flight restriction, restricted zone. So we're not gonna fly into the prison or over the prison or near the prison. Switch to video and I'm just gonna do a little. All right. I wish it was kind of sunny. I mean, this is kind of a, a dark and dreary day, but check it out. Now, because this particular Mavic Mini has never been flown before, it's given me some flight tutorial stuff which I kind of want to get out of. I don't want this. So this is good to know that if you just get a Mavic Mini, you've never flown a drone before, it's going to give you some uh, tutorials when you first start the drone and you start flying. So that's good if you've never flown before. It's going to tell you the controls. And one thing I noticed about this is there's no um, manual control for the camera settings if you're in video mode. If you are in photo mode, you can go to manual exposure, you can dial in your shutter speed, you can dial in your ISO. 
Um, kind of interesting how they omitted that from the video component of the app. And I'm wondering if a firmware update or an app update could uh, help us out with that. I'd love to be able to manually affect my exposure controls in video mode. My first impressions are that it's really maneuverable. Um, going left and right, the, the latency for this is really good. Uh, and okay, so I've flown before, I've flown the Mavic Mini yesterday and I was doing some almost FPV style flying underneath some tree cover and um, around some vegetation and stuff. And I was really impressed by how responsive this thing is. Um, however, because there's no obstacle avoidance, you gotta be careful. And I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous doing some of the things that I would have normally done with a Mavic Pro, knowing that I wouldn't be crashing into something and the, the sensors would save me. Brett just ran into a snag. Um, with the Mavic Pro and a lot of the Mavics that we've used in the past, there has been every single one there's been a full size Actually, you, usb port right there not with this one this is on one end this is for my ipad the other one is my usb but there's no place to put in my usb normally the usb slot is right there but surprise dji fooled us switched it up <laughs> brett has to kind of finagle his ipad around just to be able to use this why is that button so big and red wow for the iPad version of this app, or at least the iOS version that's blown up to iPad size, yeah, that's kind of a ridiculous, <laughs> that's like a, a, a preschool phone style size button there. Yeah, nothing really is optimized for your iPad 24? I only, I, where's my 24 frames per second? That's a question I had. So there's no what? 24 frames a second right now. 25 or 30 is what you can select at 2.7K. Um, so if there's like a firmware update or something happening in the near future where we can get our 24 back, that'd be pretty sweet. Can you nope. get that smaller? Oh, you can, you, you can minimize it. So That's you can good. go like that, you can go like that, or you can make it bigger. No, so okay. I kind of like that actually, that they, right. they did that. That's kind of nice. Let's take off, man. All right, let's see let's, what's up. Let's take off. All right. Wow. Feels just really solid. Hover there. So it's not that loud either, you know? It's pretty quiet. The other cool thing, and it's interesting to me, is this is not beeping. Normally with a Mavic, uh, uh, the obstacle avoidance sensors will be beeping at you yeah. if you're that close. So honestly, I feel like I have really good control of, of the uh, DJI drones, and not having that beeping sound go off is kind of nice. Right. Yeah, it's really nice. I can feel right off the bat, I, I feel it doesn't have the power of the Mavic 2, um, but the smoothness, it seems almost smoother than any Mavic I've flown. And you know, a lot of people compare this to the Spark, but it's definitely smoother than the Spark. And, all right, even when I move it like right here, or now I stop it, and then I move it left, and I'm looking at it here, it's almost like they built in the initial, if you guys know the DG, DJI app, like the cinematic mode, or even feels slightly like a faster version of tripod mode. Like everything seems smooth and cinematic. Wow, I'm, I'm very impressed right off the bat. This is. This is really nice. Just the, the feel of the drone feels great. We also have a little bit of wind going on right now. I mean, it's not a lot of wind, but it's a, it's a breeze. And it's, it's holding up there really well. Now, because it's so light, it may get pushed around a little more, especially getting pushed up when the props don't really have anything to, to account for that. Um, but getting pushed sideways and pushed down, it, I think it's doing a great job counteracting that, that, that wind. And I noticed that when we're flying around, you know, we have this sky that's, Obviously, even though it's cloudy, it's blown out, and it's, it's consistently blown out because it's cloudy. So if we try and get a shot of the horizon and a good deal of the sky is in the shot, the camera may very well expose automatically for the sky, darkening your horizon, darkening the ground and everything, you know, all the, the, the landscape. And you really can't do much about it except for change your angle of your camera and your drone for your camera to automatically expose again for the ground instead of the sky. And I just wonder, I was like, you know, you, there's gotta be a way for you to be able to, in the app, fix that so that we can have control over the camera exposure settings manually in video mode. There's gotta be a way. Oh. <laughs> now can you hold your hand underneath it Let me... and then keep pressing down, keep pressing down. And eventually it'll go into landing mode, right? Okay. Now, now, there we go. Hey, hey. Okay. So you can't just grab it. You've got to let it go into its landing process uh, when it thinks that your hand is the ground. Yeah. Then you can go ahead and catch exactly. it. Exactly. 
I wouldn't advise doing this when you're first starting because it still is kind of risky. So practice a little bit before you do that. So here's the, the battery charging hub and you, you connect to it right there with um, a USB cable and you power it that way. The only way to actually check these batteries for voltage is by pressing that power button on the side and then looking at the lights right there. The batteries themselves do not have a light indicator. So this is the only way you can see without putting the battery in the drone what your battery charge status is at. Now here's one thing I keep thinking about. Whenever I keep picking up my Mavic Mini, I keep thinking there's no battery inside because it feels too light to have a battery in there and I check and I'm like, is there a battery? Yes, there's a battery. It's just crazy how light this thing is. So he's asking about sport mode. Uh, upper left of the app, you see it says mode P. Oh yeah. You tap that, it goes in mode S. Got tap it. again, goes mode C. So it goes from cine smooth to positioning to sport mode. And so whatever you need to fly in, you can just do it with a tap of the button. It's I'm getting an aircraft power insufficient message for sport mode. Wow. I'm it's only 57%, but it's not giving me a, uh, it's not opening it up all the way, you know? 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 miles, 24 miles per hour. It was taking his time getting up there though. So I guess you don't get full sport mode speed if you're not hundred percent. I wonder where the cutoff point is for percentage. I'm following some cars with CineSmooth to see this yaw in action okay. with some uh, camera tilt. It seems very smooth. All right, I really like how the controls feel. Um, in P mode, obviously that's going to be a little more responsive and sport mode, very responsive. In C mode or CineSmooth, I was able to get some really cool shots flying out um, underneath these trees and stuff. And because the, uh, the latency of the display is pretty minimal, I was able to maneuver around pretty easily. I didn't realize the arms were so bendy. Look at this. They're almost like gummy arms. It's kind of strange. And then the props are extremely flexible. This could probably fall out of the sky and be relatively okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this footage and pictures back on the computer and analyze them. But real quick, I just wanted to say thank you to Brett uh, for coming down, you know, for visiting me and for um, also testing out the Mavic Mini. Two minis are better than one. That's right, that's <laughs> right. So um, check out uh, Brett's channel. So even though the weather was very overcast today, um, I don't know if it was really a true test of the video because it's kind of dreary and drab anyway, but I took some footage yesterday um, as the sun was getting a little low in the sky around 3.30, maybe 4 o'clock, just to see what it would look like uh, with some sun. And it doesn't look bad, although you got to admit, the, the highlights are a little overblown. And the reason that is the case, I think, is because since the sun is lower in the sky, there's a lot of shadow. So if you look at this dog park here, the majority of the dog park is in shadow. So we have the city skyline over here and it's kind of blown out. And I think it's because the drone doesn't know exactly what to expose for. It's kind of exposing for these trees in the middle. Um, it's not exposing for the dog park. It's not exposing for the city skyline. And that's one of the things that is frustrating about the Mavic Mini, at least from someone who's used to DJI drones and used to manually controlling exposure. Trying to expect professional grade uh, video performance from a $400 drone, which you know, at least a couple hundred dollars of that is going into the flight characteristics and the body and the, the design of it. You can't expect a whole lot. So I'm, I'm gonna give it a pass. I'm gonna say that it's still good video for the price. And um, you know, if this is someone's first drone, they may not wanna get into the automatic settings um, in video mode. They might, they might wanna just hit it, start it and, and fly. One thing I did notice looking at some of the sunny footage from the other day is it has a lot of lens flare. Um, one is pink, one is green, and then one is pink again, and that's like full frame flare. It's around this time that I'm really having trouble avoiding that lens flare. Um, like right here, I'm just trying to get a cool shot of the trees. Oh, lens flare again. It, I think it's probably one of the easier drones, at least DJI drones, to control. The whole Mavic line has always been controllable, although I would say that the Mavic Air and the Spark are less controllable than this one. This one just feels locked in and very easy to maneuver around. All right guys, the Mavic Mini, and I've got two of them. I don't need two, so what I'm doing is a giveaway on this channel. Um, down below, comment hashtag Mavic Mini and tell me what kind of footage you like to take and, or where you like to fly drones 
I'm gonna give you guys a two week window of opportunity to do that from the upload date of this video. It is an international giveaway, so if it's overseas, I'm gonna figure out how to get it to you. I am gonna put out a tutorial on how to use the Mavic Mini, just like I do with the other drones I've used in the past. Keep an eye out for that, and check out Brett Garamella's channel. Thank you so much for uh, visiting me in Raleigh, Brett, and uh, we'll have to do it again soon for a third time. Until next time, happy flying.